In this video, I'm going to talk to you guys about what I've been doing in my training to take my bike fitness to the next level and to be as competitive as I possibly can in this 2023 pro triathlon season. Welcome back to another video, you lovely lot. Now, before we get going, you're gonna wanna go down there and click the subscribe button because, well, because, don't argue with me, all right? Just do it. <laughs> now, I'm procrastinating a little bit because I do have a bike session to do, which is gonna be part of this video, but I thought I'd talk a little bit before about that and things that I've noticed in my training and almost be honest with you guys, show you guys or talk to you guys about what my weaknesses are and what I've been addressing to, fingers crossed, be as strong as I possibly can be this season on the bike. Now, of course, I want to be good at swim, bike and run. You can't just be good on the bike and expect to have a good race. However, last season, I had a relatively decent season. I got some good results under my belt and it was very apparent to me that I was missing something on the bike. In the swim, I actually had a really good swim season and I feel like I'm I'm better now and I should have a better swim season this year, which I'm really looking forward to. I had a really good run off the bike season, which was great and I'm feeling in a good place as well now. Last season, I did go well on the bike. However, there were a number of times when I just felt like I was lacking a little bit. Now to clarify and to put this into perspective for you, I've gone from age group racing to pro racing. Last year was my first pro season and it's very, very different. For those of you that don't really know the sort of the dynamics of pro racing, essentially age group racing is, it's, it's an individual time trial. It's you pick on the bike, we're gonna take for this video on the bike, you pick a power that you can hold for that duration and you just sit at that power, essentially. That's what I used to do anyway, and I can imagine that's what most people do. In pro racing, you don't do that the dynamic of the race can be different from every single race. If you get out of the water, you run through T1, you get on the bike, and the group that you're in is riding at 400 watts, you'd be stupid to not go with that group and ride at 400 watts. No matter the fact that you don't know when they're gonna slow up, if they are gonna slow up, you need to ride hard. If you're 50K into the ride, you're riding at 350 watts, and suddenly guys surge up to five, 600 watts, it would be silly to not go with the group and surge up. And that's where that pro dynamic is very different on the bike. And that is the thing that I struggled with quite a lot last season. Now, from various testing that I've done on the bike, it's very apparent that I've got a very good sustained effort. I can sit at a decent power for a long period of time. However, my surging, and it's almost not just the surging, it's the recovering from the surging and then able to surge again multiple times and recover from those. That's where I've been lacking. And to give you a specific example of that, when I was racing 70.3 Swansea last year, I came out in a really good position. I had a great swim. I was like fourth on the bike or something, um, main chase pack, feeling really, really good. And as soon as it hit the hills, now I'm a little bit heavier guy anyway, so the hills kind of suck for me, but that's not a good excuse. Um, the surges went and, and I tried to hold on and I, and I was holding on for a few of them and then I just, I blew because I just went too far into the red. And it wasn't actually from the surges specifically, it was more the fact that we'd gone through a few surges and I was still in the red and guys were still riding pretty hard and I just couldn't recover from it. And I almost needed to be like, hey guys, let's, uh, let's spin for 10 minutes, do me a favor, and then I can help you guys out. But obviously, uh, yeah, couldn't do that, <laughs> unfortunately. And, and that's where my problem has been. And like I said, it's been apparent in various testing that I've done. I've got quite a good high-end power. I've got quite good sustained power. However, I don't necessarily have that ability, or I didn't have that ability to surge, come back down, sustain power, surge, over and over again and that that really is what happens in pro racing and I'm still learning the craft because you know I'm going into my second season racing pro I'm still going to be making a lot of mistakes I can imagine and I still don't really know what I'm doing let's be honest I have no idea <laughs> so there's still going to be mistakes that are going to be made however if I can address these things that I know now 
I'm gonna go into 2023 feeling as strong as I possibly can. And actually I feel far, far better on the bike now, which is fantastic. So I'm gonna get changed. We're gonna get on the bike and we're gonna chat about this session that we got. Why I've decided to film at this angle. It's not very flattering at all, and I've got these bloody things in the way, so. <sighs> Where's James when you need him, eh? <laughs> anyway, we picked up on this problem last season, and then after doing some testing in the off season, it was made apparent uh, through kind of specific numbers and facts, I guess, um, that that was a genuine issue and a genuine something to address. So that's what I've been really been trying to address over the winter period and building towards the season. And I'm happy to say I'm feeling a lot better doing it. There's still work to be done. That's why I'm continuing doing these types of sessions, which I'm gonna run through now. And uh, fingers crossed, come race season, we'll be smashing it. <laughs> really should get a tripod. Anyway, essentially, today's session is two hours and doing a bit of a warm up and then just a load of zone five efforts. Essentially working at that kind of, that surging intensity, it, obviously it varies, but high intensity zone five effort, followed by short recovery and just repeating it over and over again. And then actually what we've been doing and what we've been building on really nicely to progress these types of sessions is actually having your base at a relative intensity as well. So whether it's zone three or sweet spot, more of a race specificity, a race specific intensity for half Ironman, Ironman, whatever it is. So for the most part, you're going to be at zone three sweet spot. So what I'll be doing is a chunk of time at that intensity and then a chunk of time surging and then bring it back down and do that repeated and just allowing or training your body to recover from those surges while you're still working is something I've really been working on and something that will allow you to take that step towards pro racing because it is a really big difference. Age group and pro racing. I definitely didn't appreciate it when I first started and I feel like a lot of people out there, you know, who jump into pro racing get a bit overwhelmed because it's very different. And I think if you can grasp this idea and, and getting really strong on the bike, you know, you're gonna be miles ahead of other people. So less talking, more cycling. So that session sucked and today hasn't necessarily gone to plan now because my heart rate monitor, if you can see that there, is in absolute pieces next to the biscuits. Um, I think, so I've had that thing, to be honest, it's been so sound for like, a year, a year and a bit, maybe longer. Actually, probably is longer. And I don't really wash it that often, so it's not great. And I think the salt and corrosion and sweat has just got in there and absolutely destroyed it. So, yeah, that sucks. Don't have a heart rate monitor now, but, I mean, there are worse things to happen. <laughs> just have to order a new one, it's fine. Uh, and I was meant to run off the bike, but... I've left this really late and I need to go out for dinner with Lydia and her cousin who's coming over from America. And she's left me a list of things I need to do, like hoovering and cleaning, before I leave. So I need to uh, Google how to use a hoover. <laughs> it's a woman's job, isn't it? Bloody hell. <laughs> God, the amount of hate I'm going to get for that comment. Um, <laughs> Anyway, hope you guys have sort of enjoyed this video. I'm showing you guys essentially the idea and the plans that I've been putting, implementing um, into my training to make sure that I'm not only a strong cyclist, because you can be a strong cyclist, but a strong cyclist in the pro triathlon field. It's very different. Um, it's a very different set of skills. It's a very different set of fitness levels. And I'm trying my best to adapt to that and to implement that in my training. And it feels like it's going in the right direction, which is really good. We've got five-ish weeks now until Lanzarote. I'm feeling fit, I'm feeling strong. I'm looking for another really good block after I recover from this one because bloody hell, my legs hurt. And yeah, we'll see how it goes. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I hope you are training well, looking forward to race season, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.